Hello, everybody. Um, we are. Well, it's time for a new episode. I am very, very exhausted. Um, mentally exhausted. I've been doing a lot of schoolwork today, combined with also playing the game during breaks from schoolwork. Um, but you know, we are done with our two times ancient shard event. Um extremely extremely disappointing so um couple of things one the editing of the shard opening um hasn't happened yet there like I, i've mentioned this in a couple videos now there were some issues relating to getting that done um at this point i think we're just gonna scrap it it's a shard opening video it's not there's no real major impact lost other than you you failing to see my disappointment. Um, that may come out at a later time, but I don't want to tiptoe around spoilers or anything. So I'm just going to kind of go over what I what I pulled. So um, I have two Deathlesses that champion is rated 2.5 stars on Hell Hades. I have a Broodlord, which I think is a 2 star, 2.5 Um Missionary is a two star. Branox, I think, was a three star, maybe. Um, you know, cool, they can apply decrease attack. It's, you know, so the epics that I got were very disappointing. The best possible one was Hoferese, um, which is a, which is, I'm going to keep Hoferese. It's a reviver. You'll need, a, you'll need those. Um, the stun, I'm not worried about. The uh, increase attack and increase crit rate is a really, really good buff. And um, the only downside to this champion is they are very, very slow. Um, I'm going to bring you over to the index so you can see what their maximum speed is. So at 60, they're 97 speed. So if we look at... Dark Elves, Spirit Host, who's currently my increase attack champion, 103 speed at level 60. Spirit Host is just faster and brings the increase attack. Now, the argument can be made, well, you're bringing with, um, and I'm always, I, I really don't want to say their name wrong, so I'm going to look them up again. With Hoferese, you also get increased crit rate. The reality is that my champions are going to be crit rate capped regardless. So this is a viable option for like a second team in faction ward or uh, in um, tag team arena is what I meant to say. The champion will also be valuable in faction wars, of course, but I will see a lot of value out of this champion for my second uh, uh, team in, in tag team arena. So, you know, once I get another decent nuker or if i replace my existing nukers this would be a good option um so that team can be a little bit weaker as far as their crit rate goes for the nuker you know i could build them at a 70 uh, percent crit rate and just assuming that you know we would always go first and hope freeze would be the difference maker so um so I, I've considered doing that. I would need to bring us, I would need to have a speed lead for that team. And, you know, it's, it's, it's complicated to make because the best speed lead that I would have for arena that I could get other than monkey King is spirit host who gets 10% in all battles. Um, but if you bring a spirit host, then you don't really need hope freeze unless you just want the increased, Crit rate. So it's it's a conundrum. So ultimately, my the best champions that I got were all rares from the event. Um and coffin smasher I got last minute last night. As well. That's when I also pulled my second deathless. So we have coffin smasher, soulbound bowyer, uh Petrophia I got from the event, and then um Mother Superior is an interesting healer um, and shielder. So that's 
something I, I, I it's not a champion I plan on building anytime soon, but they do come with a speed aura, which could help in that what I was just talking about. And I didn't know that until just looking at it. Um, so there's value there. Plus, bringing a little bit of healing is always a good thing. I don't necessarily know that they're going to get put into any teams right now. Um, but it's an option, you know, not something that I want to be a main option on my account. I don't think I would ever take this champion to six stars, but I, it is a healer. Um, should I get into a situation where I, I, I need one? I'm hanging on to Abyssal and I'm hanging on to him only because one of my favorite cre content creators is telling me I should. Um, it isn't a, okay. I literally, I see the value now right away. Um, he released a recent video talking about this champion and why they're his favorite. And I didn't realize it was an AOE A1. So the AOE A1, and you can place block buffs. Um, it's a low chance, but it is a chance. If you were to put this champion in a stun set, I could see them being very valuable. Um, also, the speed aura for faction crypts. You could get some real value out of Demon Spawn with an Abyssal and a stun set. Um, Demon Spawn was one of my harder ones to progress in. And mostly because I just lacked crowd control, which is crazy when you think about the kind of crowd control champions that I had um, on my main account. So you also get a healer for all allies, which is good. And then you get the weak version of increased attack and increased defense, which on the same ability is valuable in itself. And while they're the weak versions, I can see the value there. So Abyssal's a champion that'll probably hang out in the vault for a little while. I don't, I can't see myself building them right now um but it's definitely a faction crypt champion and as i start to try and progress in faction crypts uh so i got really excited because i just realized i'm gonna go finish faction crypts as soon as i'm done making this video on my main account so uh so, <laughs> sorry i was like oh fact fact faction crypts uh, but yeah abyssal is definitely a uh a decent champion that i'll, I'll hang on to i don't think i'm gonna feed feed him uh in fact i'm gonna put him into Reserve vault right now. I'm gonna put both of them in the reserve vault vault for now. Um, I did get this guy from one of the events. I just I'm honest, I don't see the value. Um you know, and, and I don't have enough of them or the time to try and get one of the epics. And the epics are good. Um, they're just I don't think they're worth the resources uh at this point in time on my account. I have a bigger focus and I'm excited about the rares that I got because the rares check some boxes for me. So what it came down to, the would between the, the the rares, the best rares, were Coffin Smasher, Soulbound, right, and and Petrifia. These are the these are the choices for my next six star. Now, a couple of things. If we look at my current clan boss, my Eris is doing a lot of damage now that she's in a toxic set. I've seen her get upwards of a million damage. So. And that's more than my Apothecary and more than even my son Wukong, unless he gets really crazy procs with Brimstone. So there is an argument in my head that I could keep Eris and put Petrifia in and get additional powerful poisons and get the poison sensitivity so that Eris does even more damage. Um, so that thought crossed my mind. Um, Soulbound Bower, while... They are very, very good champion. We have an AoE A1, ignoring defense on the A2, and then turn meter reduction um, depletion on the A3. Um, she is a good champion, and I, I don't know that I would six-star her, and I don't know that I would build her right now, but... That is a good champion, especially just even if you just consider it for the A1 and putting her in a stun set, um, you can get some value out of her that way for faction wars, of course. Um, but it doesn't help me on clan boss. So she's not really an option as much as Coffin Smasher versus Petrifier. Now let's look at Coffin Smasher's kit. So Coffin Smasher, A1, when ascended, has a chance of on each hit on a three times hitter of applying decrease attack. Now, if built right, theoretically, because his other ability is on a big cooldown, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, he's going to have multiple chances to apply that debuff before the clan boss takes a turn. Meaning that if we can keep that increase attack up or decrease attack up, then 
we're going to receive less damage from the clan boss and then survive more turns and thus doing more damage. Um, so it's a big swing for, for my team. We would also be able to get Giant Slayer, um, which will... Or Giant Killer, whatever it's called in this game, which would give us a lot of HP-based damage um, with his multi-hitter on the A1. And then we would have... Um, we put him in a relentless too. We already looked at the build the other night. We'd have him in a relentless in a relentless set, so he's going to be applying these debuffs often. So then we have an HP burn on a four turn cooldown, which is a rough cooldown for an HP burn, but he is going to be in a relentless set, and I'm probably going to try to build him with a decent amount of speed so that he gets m multiple turns between gl clan boss turns. Um. And he does get, when booked, 50, 65, 70, 75% chance, right, of applying HP burn, which is a really, really good ability. Um, we would get a lot of damage out of that HP burn on Clan Boss, and I'm pretty excited about it. And then the passive, which is, again, in conjunction with the decrease attack, reducing the enemy, the dam enemy AoE damage by 5%. So Clan Boss would then do just 5% less damage across the board. Again, that's more turns, um, which means more opportunity for poisons to tick and things like that. Now, if we look at my existing team, which today, by the way, just look at this real quick, on hard, 12.76 million. So we one-keyed hard today. That's the first time I've ever one-keyed hard. Uh, Eris just had a really great run. So did Sun Wukong with his Brimstone Prox. This is not the norm, just to be clear. I haven't like ascended, um, but this is what I would like to hit with a Coffin Smasher team. But let's look at the, what I currently kind of have going here. So if we look at the current team. Deacon is a lock. Apothecary is a lock. And Kale is a lock. Um, Apothecary, because he's going to generate more turns for my team. Um, he doesn't do a lot of damage, but I do think he gets more increases to damage that my team puts out. I am willing to experiment without with, with in situations where I don't use Apothecary and see if there's any gain or loss with that. But for now, I'm going to say Apothecary is a lock. He has Giant Slayer. He's fully ascended, uh, fully mastered, and fully booked, I think. Um, yeah, fully booked. So... I think if I could get Phantom Touch on him, that would improve my damage quite a bit. He also could have, could benefit from some better gear, which, you know, I haven't really... I just kind of threw gear on him and haven't bothered to rework him. He is quite slow. I'd want him to be much faster than that. So um, getting his boots up to six to uh, six stars, or, or uh, to uh, 16, rather will benefit him greatly so that may be the next step for him um so then if we go back and we look at my clan boss team um so he's a lock kale's a lock and deacon's a lock and i'm sure you guys are like you're gonna take out sun wukong who's your only brimstone champion well He's not proccing Brimstone that much. I mean, that's just the reality of, of him right now. He's not proccing Brimstone enough. And it's a bit of a problem on my account, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, that inconsistency. It's hard to play around something so inconsistent. Because, you know, was it 15% chance, I think, right? Right on the on level one. It's good to have. It's I love having it. It's just not consistent enough. And then, you know, I'm banking on that. If I'm going to, you know, use my keys the way I want to use them, you know, if I want to four, I want a four key nightmare. That's my goal right now, right? If I want to get to a point where I can four key nightmare, I need to do 10 million damage per key. If that means that I need to get three brimstone procs to get enough damage out of him or bring one of the rares I just got and get consistent damage then that's the route that I think I need to go. So my thought process here is that Eris and Sun Wukong are both expendable and I can replace them with 
Petrifia, and Coffin Smasher, respectively. Um, I would go back to, to turning off Kale's A2, letting him use just his A3 and his A1, generating a lot, a lot of value out of my um, Petrifia with the, with the um, Poison Sensitivity. I would get Decrease Attack, from Coffin Smasher, plus a chance at HP burn, which ticks pretty hard. Um, and then if I have the masteries on both of them for War Master for Petrifia and Giant Killer for um, Coffin Smasher, I'm going to get damage out of them as well. Coffin Smasher is also an HP-based champion, so not only will he have more survivability against the clan boss, it'll also increase his damage overall. So... Ultimately, Coffin Smasher is my choice over Petrifia, but Petrifia will likely be the follow-up level 60 unless I can come across a better option. Um, and so that's the plan. I And there's a, a, a couple of reasons why Coffin Smasher beats out Petrifia. There is an argument to be said, and this is something I considered, that Petrifia might be better to go first because I could bring Petrifia in and benefit both the Eris and the Kale. And I would get a lot more extra damage right away. However, I'm going with Coffin Smasher be because of the bigger picture. Coffin Smasher does a lot for me. He brings decreased attack, not only for clan boss, but any other boss I'm fighting in the game. We're talking... Ice Golem, Dragon, um, Fire Knight, Spider. Well, no, I wouldn't use him on Spider. I'll be clear about that. I would not use him on Spider. Um, but the first three I mentioned, he would definitely get used on. He also brings a triple hitter for Fire Knight. So now we're checking off multiple boxes, right? Where, if I'm being completely honest, other than Dragon, I don't see Petrifia getting use anywhere else on my account. I would rather bring Coffin Smasher. Um, I would rather bring Sun Wukong for the waves. Um, Sun Wukong for the. I would bring Sun Wukong for the waves going into the dungeon fights, um, and the chance for Brimstone on fights where I have a little bit more survivability because they don't hit as hard as Clan Boss. Um, so I would. I would. I don't think I would be bringing Petrifia because she doesn't really bring anything in the way of um, wave clear. And while she does bring the weak version of decrease attack, uh, Coffin Smasher brings the big version. So, and while she, she does have an AOE attack, but, you know, I, I don't think that that's going to be clearing waves quite as fast as Kale and um, Sun Wukong. So I think Sun Wukong would continue to come with me for dungeons, as well as Kale, of course. Um, and I'm getting a lot of speed and, and healing from Apothecary to help get me through some of the tougher content where, you know, we get hit pretty hard. So, um, you know, if we look at my, I think it's my dragon team, which I might not be able to look at right now, but yeah, I won't be able to look at them right now. Um, I'm too, too energy short, but my, my dragon team, um, I'm usually losing, I think, Eris in my dragon team each, uh, each run. So to bring Coffin Smasher, he's a little tankier. He brings decrease attack and, and, and a lot of benefits to the team. So Coffin Smasher is the decision. It's just the luck of the draw. If I would have got a better Epic or even a legendary, that would have been the route that I would go. So I think the next one we're going to be looking forward to is going to be Sacred Shards. They might do a Primal Shard, but I'm not, you know, I'm not getting another Primal Shard anytime soon. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just the way things went. Didn't get any extra, um, from the clan boss. Um, I am considering going for a four key brutal in the meantime um 
if if we were clearing brutal every day, I would definitely do it. And this is no fault of anybody's. I mean, I'm putting all my extra keys on the main account into Ultra Nightmare to try and down this, but we haven't really been able to down it since we lost a lot of people from the clan. Uh, so I think brutal is where I need to start putting those keys to help some of these other people progress. Um, but I, you know, and ultimately once I'm able to get to a four key nightmare, that's two chests, but they're both nightmare chests. It's going to be a big boost to the account. And you guys will see that some of my decisions met that, that seemed crazy. were not so crazy after all. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to call that a video mostly because I'm really excited to go back over and do Faction Wars on the main account and get Lydia today. Well, I think I can wait to pull her. So I'm going to wait to pull her until Tuesday, but I need to unlock her. So um, yeah, super excited about that. Thank you guys for watching. The support has been great. The comments have been great. Uh, still working on a couple new ideas and projects for the uh, YouTube channel. Really excited about those. Uh, this video... it was recorded Sunday. It's going to come out Monday. I don't know what my work schedule is going to look like tomorrow. So I wanted to get this out of the way now. Um, and then I can focus on just playing the game and, and get ready for my new, my new job. So, um, and I still have a bunch of homework that needs to be done before Tuesday. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.